Hey everyone, Roku here. A uh, quick update on the ROG phone situation. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. After spending all week after work moving all my things across and backing everything up to my old phone, had also been busy looking and researching for new phones. I was hoping if I found the right one, I could just walk into the store and swap it. After getting everything ready and planning to go in this weekend, it came up with an update and it prompted me to update the phone. At this point I thought, you know, why not? What have I got to lose? What are the chances that this is the patch that actually fixes the issue? Probably slim. But uh, well, it fixed the issue. As you can see on screen, the camera is working again. Now I'm not sure if the update patched the issue or if just the process of updating the phone fixed the issue. Maybe I'll have the issue again and then if there's another update just that process of updating the phone is what fixed it. I don't know. But here we are. The phone is fixed and now I don't have to go to the store at least so that's nice. I do have some mixed feelings. My phone updated to Android 12 uh, which is Absolutely, it's the ugliest, most hideous thing I've ever seen, and I hate it. Everything is 10 times larger than it needs to be. Like, I'm not 80, guys, I can see. Maybe in a few years, we'll see. But right now, I don't need it. So, that's really annoying. I've had to rearrange a lot of things. Uh, hopefully, there's a, some sort of patch for that soon. I've looked around, I've tried all sorts of apps and different launches, and it's just not the same. It's They're all buggy or broken, or they've got ads. It's just not worth doing. You just gotta put up with it. It wasn't the Android 12 update that fixed the phone, by the way. There was an update after it, a little security patch update that seems to have fixed it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I didn't read the patch notes. All I know is it's fixed. So annoying phone moving aside, there's nothing wrong with the phone now, which means I have no warranty to return it under. The rest of the week, you guys were very helpful putting in suggestions in the comments for other phones. A lot of the phones I had already seen and knew about and rolled out for one reason or another. Look, honestly, I'm happy that the issue is fixed or hopefully fixed because there's really limited stock in Australia it's not even like out of stock, it's just no, you straight up can't buy it here. It's just not offered. So I was getting to the point where I was like, do I just go and refund this phone every three months and swap it for a new one? Because there's no other phones that I'm remotely interested in. The Xiaomi Black Shark 4 that is offered here, and it's for quite a cheap price. Like you could buy three Black Shark 4 phones for the price of one ROG phone 5S Pro. Or if you just bought the 5S, you could still get two. <laughs> so definitely an amazing phone for the price. But there was just a few things that I didn't like about it that I wasn't willing to settle on. A lot of people were reporting that it had screen errors where the screen would just not recognize the touch input at some point. And that's not something I wanted to risk. I'm trying to get away from terrible problems, not, you know, sign up for more. So that, that ruled that one out for me. The other thing is I'd prefer to have the ability to have four shoulder buttons rather than two. Because I find, it depends what game you're playing, but I find attack and dodge or aim and attack for first person shooter. That's great, but you also want to have like jump and crouch or run or a special skill or something, you know, swap characters. The four buttons is kind of the, the minimum amount of buttons for me that I find works well. You can get away with two, like I said, but it's just not as good. Another phone that I found that's not actually available here, but I figured for you guys with lower budgets, I obviously I haven't tested the phone myself, but the Xiaomi Poco X3 Pro looked absolutely amazing for its price. It was around 300 US dollars. So this phone came with some amazing hardware for that price. It seemed to maintain about 40 to 50 FPS in Genshin, which is just unreal. Like for those of you who don't know, if your phone can run Genshin, it can run anything. There's nothing else. There's no competition in terms of hardware usage. That's why I set the benchmark at Genshin. If you can do 60 FPS in Genshin, there's nothing the phone won't run currently at least. We'll see how Withering Waves plays out. <laughs> but I have a feeling it'll be a little bit more optimized than Genshin. 
though I could be wrong. Now, I saw comments about the Legion Jewel 2 from Lenovo. I, I did already know of this phone and it's not available in Australia, so that's ruled out. There was a couple of things that I, I didn't like about it, so I, I was not that keen on it anyway. Not to say it's a bad phone, just not for me. The ZTE Nebula Red Magic 6 Pro, I kind of felt the same way. It, it wasn't a necessarily a bad phone. It's just I preferred the ROG Phone 5. It just had the features that I liked a bit better implemented and it was more catered to my style and the things I like in a phone. The one phone that came to my attention through the comments that I got really excited about and I was unaware of. So thank you everyone who pointed it out because I didn't know it existed just yet. The ZTE Nebula Red Magic 7 and 7 Pro. Man, these phones got me so excited. They're actually next gen phones. They finally had the upgrade that I've been saying that Asus needs for quite a while, which is the graphics card. So instead of the Adreno 660, we have the Adreno 730. That's it, we've made it. We're at full consistent 60 FPS in Genshin. The phone has proper cooling as well, so you don't need to buy an aftermarket cooler and put it on the back and plug it into a power source. It's, it's all built in, it's all there. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is that little upgrade and boost of CPU that we needed. The ROG phone was very well balanced, but overall the hardware just wasn't quite there. Although they certainly leaned very heavy on their marketing with the CPU saying that, you know, they've got all these CPU upgrades, but in reality the phone is limited by its GPU right now for most cases. Like, you'll be in a game and you'll see 40% CPU usage and then you'll see like 80% or 100% GPU usage. So, you know, pretty self-explanatory there. Now I don't have and I haven't tested the Red Magic 7 or 7 Pro. I'd absolutely love to. I can't confirm that it definitely plays Genshin at 60 FPS locked, but I mean I've seen enough videos to be pretty confident that it does. So unless CTE decides to send me out a reviewer sample, which I don't see happening, I'm not going to be able to test this phone unfortunately because it's not offered in Australia. If there's anyone watching that has one and wouldn't mind recording some tests for me, I would absolutely love that and you can contact me here at this email address on screen or you can click the description. I made this address just for you. So after getting sucked into a bit of a research binge, I was pretty excited about the phone to be honest. It's got actual hardware improvements. So I'm quite excited to see what the ROG Phone 6 is going to do to counter the Red Magic Pro and 7. There were certainly things that I did not like about the phone and decisions I questioned between the 7 and the Pro version. There are also things that the ROG Phone 5 already does better, such as it has Gorilla Glass Victus on the ROG Phone 5, which is the latest at the moment, rather than Gorilla Glass 5, which is two or three generations outdated to my knowledge, on the Red Magic 7 and 7 Pro. It's a bit weird that a flagship phone does not have the latest technology and improvements for some aspects. They certainly got the hardware correct with the CPU and GPU, and it has enough RAM as well. Honestly, on a mobile, you don't need more than 12 gig of RAM. Even that's quite premium. 8 gig will get you by, but 12 gig is nice to have. I do appreciate it. The ROG Phone 5 also has a bigger battery at 6000 mAh versus the Red Magic. Both of the 7 and 7 Pro have a 5000 mAh battery. The ROG Phone 5 is already winning that fight. Two things I will say that both the phones need. Uh, so hopefully the ROG Phone 6 has them because the Red Magic 7 and 7 Pro do not have them. In my opinion, they should both have competitive cameras. That's a given. Like, no more excuses of reviewers saying, oh, but it's a gaming phone. No, it's still a phone and it's a flagship model phone for these brands. They should have competitive cameras where I can take a photo and it not look like crap. The other thing is waterproof and dust proofing. I want to see both the ROG phone and any competitors and like the Red Magic 7 and 7 Pro 
they should all have a proper IP waterproof rating and they should have dustproof as well. It's great that they have leading hardware, they still should have the leading features that the other flagship phones have. They're competing with the same prices as well. But back to the Red Magic 7, I am super excited about it and I love seeing some of the innovative things that are being added to the user interface among other things. One of the features shown was the ability to have pictures open like a, say a note or a guide or a map with location marked on it and to have it displayed in the corner of the screen while you're playing your game still, which is awesome because I've been in that situation a few times, maybe in Genshin Impact where you're trying to find something on a map but you have to keep opening and closing the map or go back and tab in between the application and your browser so you can find whatever it is you're looking for and it's quite frustrating. This was a really cool improvement that I was excited to see. So now that we've reached this level of performance, I wanted to discuss frame rates quickly. There's a lot of talk of high refresh rates, but in reality, the sad truth is most games are limiting you to 60 or 90 FPS. There are very, very few games that will run at 120 FPS or higher. And to be quite honest, those are not games that are visually that pretty. The biggest disappointments for me so far have been Apex and Call of Duty Mobile. You can only have 90 FPS on Call of Duty and you have to have it set to high graphics. You can't use maximum graphics, yet my phone hardware shows that it's not maxed out all the time. So why are they limiting that for me? Really, they shouldn't be limiting that for you. If the hardware is capable of doing it, that should be a choice I'm able to make. Now, as for Apex, you only get 60 FPS when I tried to play it. Now that my phone is staying with me, I will be trying it and seeing how it plays on the ROG phone, and I will post a video on that for you all later, since I'm keeping it, since it's no longer faulty. Apex limits you to 60 FPS, and I think it was uh, medium, or it might have been high graphics, I'd have to double check. But regardless, it wasn't the full graphics, and only 60 FPS was just kind of makes you feel like, why do I even have a high refresh rate since the game's just gonna limit it for me, even though the phone is capable of double the frame rate at a higher graphical setting. It's a real shame that games are limiting the frame rates like this, because if you've ever seen 120 FPS, it is a beautiful sight. After 120 FPS, you'll start to see diminishing returns, and it's honestly hard to tell the difference until you hit around 200. 40 FPS, which you won't notice as much of a difference in any way. Again, diminishing returns. At this point, instead of going for 240 FPS, you're much better off going up to 2K resolution and then even 4K, but that's not going to happen on mobile for a little while. You can see much more visual difference and clarity having 2K resolution and 120 FPS rather than 240 FPS at 1080p. It looks absolutely beautiful. You get the best of both worlds. Anyway, that sums up my crazy wasted week with the bit of excitement about the new phone as well. I don't think that was a waste. I'm glad that I found out about it. So that's my update on the ROG phone. I don't know if this is going to help you guys because I mean, I don't, I can't confirm if the issue is actually fixed or not. I guess we'll see what happens. I'll keep reporting on it, you know, if anything new comes up. But until then, ROG phone is working fine, again, uh, even after a wasted week of my time. And we're all good. We're gonna go back to reviews on games and that sort of thing. I'll try and post some gameplay for you guys so you can see how it runs on the ROG phone. And remember, if anyone does have a Red Magic 7 or 7 Pro and they want to run those tests for me, please get in contact with me here. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all again next time.